bought some paint. I wanted something better than Home Depot enamel, but I wasn't ready to go with like an all grip at 400 bucks a gallon plus special primer and all that stuff. So I went to the automobile paint store and the guy was super helpful and I got this. It's a two part acrylic polyurethane. Um, I got the same color as the original boat. It's kind of a beigey. It's not my favorite, but it's just going to be so much easier to do it the same color. That way I don't have, even have to paint the bottom of the boat because there's nothing wrong with it. And I got home today from fetching my motor and the sun came out so I sprayed. Probably wasn't 100% ready. You know, what's new? Super easy to spray. I didn't get any runs that I know of. Um, this will be great. The sun's supposed to be out tomorrow. I can put a second coat on this front area and put the hatches in for permanent. That would be a nice thing. Get them out of my shop. Um, I can put in the fuel filler permanent if I get it painted. And I'm going to get a second coat on all this back area. I can put all these hatches and doors in. I'm going to put the um, bait tank back in now because I got a good coat on this interior. So, yeah, things are looking up. I was kind of in a slump there for a couple of weeks. Not knowing what kind of paint to get. The weather was terrible. Not knowing how much sanding I wanted to do. But uh, I'm past it now. We're painting. It's looking good. And I patched the hole where I put the steering wheel in the wrong place. Because the motor I bought has a shifter on this side. So the steering wheel needs to be on this side. No big. I knew when I was cutting this hole I shouldn't have been cutting it yet but I did it anyway so I ground the old hole um, oversized I cut a piece of the old boat to a tapered plug and epoxied it in and then I think I have six layers of thin glass over the top and now I'm sanding it flat I'm applying texture to this. This is the original part of the hull and it's really, really rough. Um, so I'm using my epoxy paint and I have thickener in it. Not as much thickener as when I did the non-skid, but I, I want it to um, leave a texture. So on this part, it's really not that critical because it's just super rough anyway. But up front where I made those closure panels, I, I put this on there. I'm trying to get it a uniform texture and it's a real fine texture. And I think it's just going to look better than having it smooth, but not quite smooth. So this is an on-purpose texture. I was careful to roll it all the same direction and came out okay. So I sanded down the epoxy filler and used a, you know, a straight edge to kind of make sure I was going correctly. And all I got left is a couple of little boo-boos. And I'm going to use uh, Bondo to take care of those so I can maybe paint this thing today. Bondo dries super fast. So according to the paint um, documents that came with it, it this stuff is self-priming on fiberglass, which is kind of nice. I don't have to uh, spray the primer and then sand it and then spray. I, I can paint directly on the fiberglass and gel coat. You know, of course, if it's clean and uh, etched up a little bit with sandpaper, so it saves it a lot of steps. Okay, two coats up front. We can put the hatches in for like permanent. I can put hardware on my cap rails because this has two coats and I can put the um, bait box in and put this cap on because it has two coats so good stuff and the paint looks okay I am definitely not the best painter around um, my fairing job is less than perfect but uh you know it's an old boat I'm okay with it some people wouldn't be but to me it looks okay so today it's supposed to get up to 70 degrees and be clear and dry. So today is whole painting day. Um, first thing I did was go around with my wife's uh, blower and try to get most of the dew off so it will dry a little quicker. And, uh, this thing works really great. It removes dust and it removes a lot of standing water. So then it's time for calisthenics. Um, took me about an hour and a half to do the hull, the entire hull. Um, 220 grit and what I'm doing here mostly is just cleaning off dirt because it's dirty from sitting out there I've at different um, times in the past 
several months I have sanded most of this hole. Um, so just kind of cleaning it up and smoothing it up and getting it ready for paint. So we'll finish sanding and I hose it off and I guarantee you this is as clean as this hole has been in probably a decade. It actually looks pretty good without paint except for all the repairs that have been done to it. So let the sun take care of drying it up and we're going to spray and I may get away with one coat because I'm painting it the same color as it already is. We'll see. Now I'm giving it a good wipe down clean up with the um, de-waxer stuff the paint guy sold me and told me to use and um, we're using it trying to do it trying to do it right. end of the day first coat complete not too bad not as good as I was hoping but not bad um, it was hard to see because the Sun was in my face on this side kind of like it is right now so I didn't get super even coverage um, but like I said it was first coat and I absolutely will have to get another coat if I want some shine to it which I do and I'm gonna have to wait five days for it to get hard so I can sand out some runs because I got some runs because I couldn't see because the sun was in my face but from, uh, from the engine thing down I'm calling it good so I'll go ahead and put the swim steps back on I'll put the hatch in here and caulk it down it had never had caulk under it before so good progress pretty happy so I bought an engine it's an Evinrude E-Tech. It's 250 horsepower. It's a 19, it's a 2019, and it has 180 hours on it, and it has all kind of bells and whistles. And it's in a guy's carport in South Louisiana, and it's on an engine stand, and it weighs just under 600 pounds, and I need to get it in my truck. So. I'm making a frame that I can clamp the engine to and just lay it down in my truck kind of like a shipping crate like they come brand new um, I could have had awesome videos of loading the thing in the truck and unloading it and I brought the camera and I bought batteries and I just my mind blanked out so I have absolutely no video of putting the thing in the truck and getting out of the truck he had one of those small portable engine lifts so we pulled the engine to the back of the truck held it up with the engine lift and bolted it to my wooden wooden um, skid just like you see it here and then I put two come along to the top of the skid one to each side of my truck bed pulled it up tight against the tailgate so it couldn't fall and then he undid the engine lift from the top of the engine grabbed the foot and as he picked up um, the weight on the foot I cranked on the come alongs and pulled it into the truck and it went really well um, So we drove it home and we did the opposite when we got to the foundry where I have an overhead crane It's a little easier and I put it on my engine stand which seems kind of small So I'm not letting go of the crane until it's time to put it on the boat So big decision is done um, a Little nerve-wracking, but I got it now. So uh, onward through the fog and we'll be mounting it before too long.